Log on, tune in, find out. Cambridge Ideas, transforming tomorrow. What do you think this is? What about this? Is this simply a stone plaque? Is it a piece of art? Is it a tool? What do you think this is? Is this a thing? Is this an animal? It may seem surprising, but all of these are images of the human body. I'm John Robb, I'm an archaeologist, and I've been studying the way that people have understood the human body over the last 10,000 years. It may seem surprising to think that the body actually has a history. We tend to take it for granted. It's a material thing, it's just there. Today we tend to see the body as a machine. When you become ill, it's not because you've sinned or because the stars are against you. It's because your body breaks down. More or less as when your car breaks down. But in fact, the ways that people have understood the human body have changed dramatically over the course of human history. This is a deer skull that's been modified to make a mask that you can put on. Finds like this suggest to us People thought that human and animal bodies were much less sharply distinguished, that you could use material things like this to transform from one into another. They didn't see the human body as fundamentally different from animal bodies or even natural forces, such as parts of the landscape. This figurine is much more recognizably human. The people who made it were much clearer about the difference between human and animal bodies than their predecessors. Instead, what they're doing is using the human body as a way of talking about social relations, such as gender, what it meant to be male or female. Suddenly, the, the human bodies look much more familiar and naturalistic to us. But how naturalistic is it? If you look closely, this is the first female nude, the Aphrodite of Knidos, you can see that they mix generic idealized beauty with personal specifics. This is a strategy to draw the, the viewer in, to show you what the ideal citizen should want, or should look like, or should feel, or should be. It's the body as a site for political use. Here's a medieval body. What the body was about has changed dramatically here. This is a book of cosmography. It tells how the universe is put together. An idea of a divine order in the universe as, as a macrocosm to the human body as a microcosm. This is a zodiac man. It's from about 1408. And you can see that it draws detailed correspondences between parts of the body and signs of the zodiac. It shows that the human body as geography is part of a divine plan, which is very reassuring. This is a 19th century anatomical model, and it's a good illustration of the scientific point of view that if you want to understand the body, you have to take it apart and look at the mechanical structure of its components, things like the muscles and the bones and the nerve systems. This metaphor of the body as a machine makes sense to us because it's how we experience our place in industrialized work rhythms. Those are the areas of the brain for the higher emotions, tasks involving social awareness or more complex emotions. Those are the areas of the brain for brain scans made during religious participation at recitals. We can understand the brain as a computer but does this mean that our thoughts and feelings are really just electrical patterns in the brain? What we have here are two portraits of Sir John Sawston, who first helped sequence part of the DNA molecule. There is a tension between the two images in this dual portrait. This is a conventional portrait, which draws on the very old idea of the body as a material shell for personality. And at the same time, what we have here is a much more modern portrait, a DNA portrait. You can specify Sir John's body by specifying the DNA code of it. 
This is really the body as information. It's perhaps the metaphor of the future. One of the most interesting things we found, which surprised me, was that in any period, there are actually several different ways of understanding the human body, and these typically conflict and cause a lot of tension. Which of these is the true portrait? I don't know. We live with the idea of the body as a machine and the idea of the body as information, and again with this older idea of the body as a material container for the soul. And we go back and forth between these in our daily lives, in different contexts. So we're not quite sure which to believe, and the tension between them is sometimes productive and sometimes causes us a lot of anxiety. <laughs>